let's talk all about what a mullet really looks like. So you've all heard the term, business in the front, party in the back. And that's exactly what it is. It's nice and tight on the sides, a little bit longer on top, like a typical nice guy's haircut. But when they turn around, it is long and it's a little shaggy in the very back. I did say guys, but girls can also do the mullet, kind of similar to the wolf cut that I did previously. If you haven't checked out that video, click the link up above and it'll take you to the wolf cut. But it's a little bit different. The wolf cut is more of like shaggy and a mullet is tighter on the side. So you are gonna get a little bit shorter, maybe above the ears on the sides and then long in the back. If you go anywhere at any high school in any town, you're gonna see a lot of teen boys wearing a mullet. And most of them have them perm, whether it's permed in the back, on the top, or all of the above. So I'm gonna do kind of a variation. You are able to adjust this any way you want, whether if you don't want the sides as short or you want the back as long as what I'm gonna do. But I'm gonna give you a little bit step-by-step -step on how to do a mullet modern. All right, you ready to do it. I'm so excited to show you exactly how to do it. If you haven't done so yet, now's a great time to hit that red subscribe button. And as always, if you end up liking this video, do not forget to hit that thumbs up button. I greatly appreciate it. And it really helps push my video out to other people that want to know how to do a mullet. All right, let's do this. Here's my mannequin. As you can see, she is sporting that wolf cut that we did previously on her, but a mullet is shorter on the sides and longer in this back section. So to start, you are going to need clips, combs, some scissors, maybe some texturizing scissors and clippers if you're wanting to go short. I always suggest to start by sectioning the hair first. You wanna take your sections from the front to behind the ear and clip that out of the way. Same with on this other side, you are gonna go from the top of the head to behind the ear and clip all that hair out of the way. This is going to be our business part, if you will. This is gonna be the shorter sections that are gonna have kind of more of that typical haircut look and the back is where it's going to be longer and shaggy. So let's determine where we want this back to be. Obviously her hair is very long and to achieve the mullet that I wanna do, her hair is way too long. So we're gonna take roughly about, I don't know, maybe three or four inches off this very back section just to get it out of the way. It is a lot easier to cut hair when it is wet, so make sure that this hair is wet when you're cutting. And use your comb, you're gonna wanna cut it at zero degrees, meaning you're not gonna hold the hair up whatsoever. You're gonna hold it just straight down, no elevation whatsoever, and you're going to cut that length off. As of right now, we're just gonna do it even all the way across to get our base of how we want this back to look. Okay, now that we have that back cut and trimmed, as you can see, it's a lot shorter. You can see the nape of the neck now. Now we are gonna move on to the sides, which is where all the magic happens. You're gonna kind of section the hair back off and you're gonna drop down this very bottom section of the hair, and we are gonna determine where we want that length to be. Like I said, you may wanna use clippers on this part, and I'm going to use my clippers on this front section. Again, we want this to be nice and tight and look like a typical haircut. So make sure you section off this back hair so you are not cutting the back part of the hair. So for this section, I want it to be fairly tight. We are gonna kind of fade the hair. So I am going to take my four guard and we are gonna just remove all this length. Just like that. 
So as you can see, I did not go back behind the ear at all. It is just very short on this section right here. Now we're gonna fade it in. So I used a four guard, but we want it short and kind of tight around the ear so it doesn't look silly. So now this is a number three and we are just gonna blend it into that four that we did. Then we're gonna drop our guard to a number two and get real close to that ear. And drop down to one eight and take a little bit more off close to the ear. Kind of get rid of that little sideburn. And then we're gonna drop it down to the shortest length without going bald. And we are doing one sixteenth. And this is gonna kind of take it up off of the mannequin's ear. So we don't have kind of those long shaggy pieces over the top. Now this is where you're gonna take your T-edgers and go up and around the ear and get it kind of tight. So you don't have overhang of those long pieces around the ear. And if you wanna square off the sideburns, you can square off the sideburns and leave it just like that. So as you can see, it's nice and tight up around the ear, still kind of faded in, and that is how the start of our mullet's gonna be. Now you're gonna do exactly the same thing that you did on this left side to the right side. Just be sure when you are checking this front, make sure the fade is starting at the same points. You don't want one side to be higher than the other. Alrighty, so here is those sides. And now we're gonna move on to this top section. So what you wanna do is you wanna determine how long you want this top to be, and you still want somewhat of a blend into these sides. So this is a whole top section. The back is still clipped back. And again, like I said, I want it to be fairly tight. I'm gonna try to incorporate these bangs and let that be the guide of how long I want this top to end up. We are gonna take the guide of these bangs and determine what the length on this top will be. So as you can see, there's those bangs right there and we are just going to chop off this whole top section. And then we're gonna move over and do exactly the same thing to blend in that guide. And on this side, as you can see, we've got a lot of this top stuff cut off, but we still have this really long piece from the side and we are just going to cut that right off. To blend it all into this top section. So again, we are just going to check and make sure we don't have any long pieces on the side to blend into that top or into the front bang. So as you can see, now we're starting to look good. We have that those super short pieces and all this is now cut. And we now need to match and do exactly the same thing on this right side. Determine where you are on the ear. So on this right side, now we need to end roughly about the middle of the ear is about the length that we have. Okay, now we're gonna take that guide from previously and start cutting some of this length on the top. Okay, so this is what these sides are starting to look like. So we have the side very close to kind of the ear, the up underneath, it's kind of like an undercut to where it's cut really short. And then this left side, same thing, cut up 
tight, kind of, you can still see the middle of the ear, but it's still pretty well blended into the sides. Now it's about connecting the two. So we obviously have this very long, kind of disconnected, short on the sides, and then just kind of long mullet in the back. Now we need to kind of join the two haircuts together. Some people like to leave it super disconnected to where it's very short and then very long, but I'm going to blend this a tiny bit so I don't have that super long corner on both sides and shag it out just a tiny bit more. Again, all still using my scissors. So we're gonna take this and get rid of any kind of long pieces that are coming from the back. And we're gonna do a technique called a slide cut. So slide cut is all about taking your scissors and holding them at an angle and just sliding them or opening and closing your shears through this back. Just connecting those two lengths from the side into this very long kind of shaggy back section. So as you can see, it's starting to blend a tiny bit more. We're gonna do just a little bit more. Just like that. So as you can see, we're still pretty disconnected, but it has a little bit more of a blend on the back. It has a little bit more layering in there. Now we're gonna do it to this other side, exactly the same way. We're gonna kind of comb all of this hair towards this front section, and then we are just going to slide cut into the back. Okay, so this is what he, she is looking like. A lot more layer, still a little bit of disconnected, and we are going to start layering it to really bring in a little bit more lift. So now that we have this very top section and then the length in our back, now we need to connect the two to really layer this back so it's not so disconnected. So we are going to make sure it's all wet so it's really easy to cut. And we are going to just section out this back section and you're going to angle the hair so this bottom section will fall out and then you just start cutting. You're gonna cut quite a bit off this layering because this top is so short for us to connect it or match up those guides we're gonna have to cut quite a bit off. Okay, so as you can see, we have this point right here, and then on this back, we have this short piece, and then we have this middle section that is long, and so that is what we are going to remove. And then you're just gonna move around the head. You're gonna take a tiny bit from that previous section you just cut, and use that as a guide to make sure everything is getting even. And as you can see, I am point cutting everything because we do want it to be very texturized and to have a lot of movement to it. So when you point cut, you do get a lot of texture in there. It makes it a little bit more modern so you're not having a really blunt cut. Now we are getting into this side where we have that super short and into the longer hair. Oh, Baxter. Hi, buddy. Hi. So now we are getting into the side where it's very short right here and then we have this really long hair and that's what we're going to blend. Again, you still want it to be disconnected, but you want just a tiny bit more texture in the layers. So there is that super short piece from that front section and the longer pieces. So we are just going to blend that in to the bottom. Okay, so as you can see, we have a lot more layering in there. Still a good amount of disconnect, so you can really see that length from that business in the front and kind of party in the back, but it just has a little bit more of like a modern take with those layers in it. Now we're gonna do exactly the same thing that we did on this right side to the left side. 
And I want to know, leave me a comment down below. Who has had a mullet? And if you have, I want you to tell me what year did you have it in? Or maybe you have a mullet right now and let me know if it's long, short, if it's similar to this, or if it's a little bit shorter than what we're doing to the mannequin. Because I will tell you, I was very surprised when I saw my nephews with the mullet. I thought, oh, the mullet is back. All hairstyles do cycle through. Eventually everything kind of comes back in full swing and the mullet is, I think, here to stay. All right, check it out. Looking fabulous. Tons of texture, a lot of layers in there, really shagged it out. I will say my mannequin does have a lot of hair, so I would go in with texturizing shears or a razor or something to really kind of debulk a lot of this hair. I am only doing it about an inch kind of towards the bottom of the layered sections. You don't want to go all the way up to the scalp or else you're going to have some really short pieces that want to stand straight up and that is never a good look. I do also like to really kind of do it in this bottom section to blend and kind of take the bulkiness out of those shorter sides where we left it a tiny bit longer to blend into that top. And it just really kind of helps get rid of that heavy section. And I believe this is why people who like kind of mullets or the shag or the wolf cut really like this haircut because it creates a lot of texture in your hair. And so it's really easy to style if you end up liking kind of the shorter in the front and longer in the back if you have a lot of texture to it. But I will tell you, this is giving me major flashbacks to kind of that 80s hairstyle. I did have sideburns when I was younger. My mom did me dirty and gave me sideburns and I kind of had it cut up around my ears like this, but I still had a lot of hair that was kind of the big puffy bangs that were all curled. I had a perm on top, it was not good. I will throw in a picture so you can see what that looks like. Thanks a lot, mom. That's probably why I decided to do hair so I could dictate what my hair was gonna look like but it was the style and this honestly is reminding me a lot of that hairstyle but this is just straight like i said i'm just doing it at the very bottom of each kind of layer and just really taking the bulk off the bottom of the layer to blend it in and give it just a little bit more movement to it all right now let's get to styling Everybody will style kind of their mullet different. I'm gonna go with kind of more of the slick back look, but with a little bit of product. For me, I personally like whenever the hair has a little bit of texture or paste in it. So since she had bangs before, I'm gonna get the hair blowing in a back direction and then put product in it, because as you can see, it kind of wants to fall forward. So again, with modernizing this, you want to take your time to actually style it. So I'm going to kind of let these sides go towards the back, but I do want this front to kind of go back. So I'm going to take a flat iron to kind of give it a little bit more like lift and curb to it. Since my mannequin's hair is very straight and this is going to just kind of help get all that hair going in the right direction. And same with the sides, you can kind of see the sides are super straight and kind of fall over the top of that undercut we did. So we're just gonna kind of bend in the hair to get it to go back. Guys, do not be afraid to use a flat iron. I know it sounds weird and you think, oh, girls only flat iron their hair, but it gives your hair a lot more movement and texture if you have a little bit of something in it compared to your hair being stick straight. So don't be afraid to grab your girlfriend's, your sister's flat iron to get the style that you want. It's not just for women. 
So as you can see, this, the sides go back a lot better having a little bit of bend to it compared to how this side is. This side just kind of lays flat. It doesn't really have much movement to it. So you do want to just kind of get those ends to have a little bit of curve to them. Okay, and again with kind of the bottom side, just getting just a little bit of wave and texture. It doesn't have to be perfect. It's just enough so it's not completely stick straight everywhere. That's why a lot of times you will see people perm this so it has a little bit more body and movement to it without having to flat iron their hair. Like I said, it's giving me total 80s vibe, which is kind of fun. Okay. Now, like I said, it's all about the product. So we are going to use a paste. This one is by Sebastian and it's Volcanic Ash Paste. And it has a lot of, it adds a lot of texture. It's a little sticky, which is what you want, but it still has kind of more of a matte finish. And as you can see, it has that webbing in it, which you want, because it's going to add a lot of texture to the hair, a lot of movement without having to reapply or use hairspray or anything like that. The sides, I do want to kind of go back and have the bang kind of front section fall a little bit more forward. And same with this other side. We are going to let kind of some of this hair fall forward and then get all this other hair on the kind of sides to go back so you can really see that undercut and the disconnect. And then I just like to kind of scrunch this into the hair to give it a little bit of texture so it's not completely flat up against the head. And then same with this back stuff. Since I put all that texture in it, you really just kind of want it to do its thing and let it just have, be almost rockerish to be honest. Okay, so here we go. We have the sides going back. We have our undercut looking pretty trendy with that modernized mullet. All right, I'm gonna change position so you guys can see a little bit better and we will talk all about it. Okay, here it is, our modern mullet. Tons of texture, as you can see in the bottom, it's undercut up on these sides with the clippers and then we just layered kind of this top section but look at how cool that is. Very rocker, stays really good with that product in there, but you can tell there is tons and tons of texture on the hair and you can get it to kind of go whatever way you want. Like I said, you can perm these, but it all just depends on the look you want. But I'd say this is pretty dang cool. A lot cooler than the hairstyle that I had in the 80s. So. I wanna know in the comments, would you do this to your hair? Yes, no, maybe so. I will tell you I'm not brave enough. I've had it once. I probably wouldn't do it again, but it is so cool to see that the mullet or modern mullet is coming back. It is everywhere. Pay attention. Younger kids are the new generation that keeps us young and cool. So if you're brave enough to do it, I want you to leave me a comment and tell me if you try this on your hair. I hope you guys love this video. I will link everything down in the description box below of all the things that I use, hair product tools, all of that, so it's super easy to find. And again, if you haven't done so yet, give this video a thumbs up and don't forget to hit that red subscribe button before you leave. Thank you so much for watching. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye.